Hi everyone, my name is Dean Atta and I am delighted that First Story have asked me to lead this workshop for you on the theme of water. It's going to be a poetry workshop on the theme of water and um, I'm really, really excited to get you writing. Um, I should tell you a little bit about myself. So I am a poet and a novelist. I've written a novel in verse called The Black Flamingo. It's about a boy called Michael who grows up to become a drag performer called The Black Flamingo and you get to find out all about him and what gives him the motivation and the support to do something quite bold. Um, and it was really fun for me to write. It's a novel in verse, so it's a series of poems that tell a story. Um, and today you're going to be telling stories within your poetry. Um, so we're going to be looking at our memories. We're going to be looking at personal stories that we have to do with water. Um, but we're going to build up to that. So before we get there, we're going to be doing a few things um, to kind of give us ideas about what we're going to write about. So um, you'll be able to skip through the video to whatever part of the workshop you most want to do, or you can just do it all. I'm going to be here writing alongside you. And that's exciting and nerve wracking for me. But what would be really great for me to know that you've enjoyed this workshop, because I can't see you right now. I'm just talking to myself. So I would love if you could take a picture of your poetry and tag first story when you post it. You can post it on Twitter. You can post it on Instagram. Um, those are the best places to share your work with us. And we would love to see it. I would love to see it, especially to know that I actually got you to write something. So I hope you're ready to write. We're going to be... Um, writing together. So I'll be doing it with you and I'll be kind of sharing bits of what I've written as well. Fingers crossed they're good. Um, and um, you're going to need a few things. So a cup of tea is optional, uh, but you do need uh, a notebook or something to write on and pen, spare pen, pencils, whatever it is, but have a spare in case yours breaks or runs out of ink or whatever could happen. I've also got some water here um, because, you know, talking a lot, I'm going to get thirsty. Um, I've got my notes. You don't need notes because I'm going to guide you through everything, but I need the notes to know what I'm going to be telling you to do. I've also got, in case I get cold, I've got a cardigan. I've got a blanket. You know, I might be wrapping myself up if I get really cold, um, because it does get cold in this room sometimes. And um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to get going. That will probably warm me up, right? Um, so I'm going to move my tea out the way and I'm going to get my notebook open and ready. So you do the same. Get yourselves ready. It's quite a lot in here. I've been writing a lot recently, which has been really good. Um, but I haven't been writing much on the theme of water. Um, I thought I'd save that for you. And so let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is a free write. So a free write is where you write non-stop and I'm just setting a timer for us now. We're going to have 10 minutes to do our free write and I'm going to tell you when we've got five minutes left and also when we've got like two minutes left and 30 seconds left just so you know um, how long we're, we've been going for. Okay so There'll also be a timer on the screen. Uh, that's going to be edited in. This is very cool, isn't it? Um, so let's get going. I'm going to tell you what to do. So we're going to write beginning with the sentence. Let me be like water. So if you just write that, let me be like water at the top of your page. And I'm going to start the timer now. 10 minutes. Go. So whatever comes to your mind, you don't stop writing. You just keep going. What I'm going to do as well is throw some random words at you, maybe to help you, maybe to throw you a curveball, um, but try and incorporate those words into what you write. OK, so let me be like water. The first word I'm going to give you is flow. So put the word flow into your free write.
Okay, the next word I'm going to give you is cycle. So that could be like the water cycle. Um, it could be like a bicycle cycle, whatever you want. Cycle, put that into your free right now. Okay. Next word is going to be ocean. Okay, ocean. Okay, the next word is row, like rowing a boat.
Okay, the next word is life. My screen went blank there, so I didn't know if you were still there. Um, the next word is life. And you've got just over two minutes left. Something naughty there, I've been crossing out, which you're not really meant to do when you're doing free works, you're just meant to keep going, so don't do what I'm doing, <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> Coming up to our final 30 seconds, so this is your last kind of thought, your last sentence, whatever's coming out, kind of just beginning to wrap it up, but not thinking too hard about how. You don't need a perfect ending because this is just a free write. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, if you can stop. And that stopped as well. So um, I'm going to read you a bit of what I wrote, um, or maybe all of it. I don't know. Um, I might skip bits if I find them embarrassing, but that's okay. Um, so I was writing, but I was also giving you those words. Um, so there, I knew a bit what was coming up. Um, sometimes I gave you the words before I wrote them down, or sometimes I gave you the words after I'd written them down. But um, our poems or our bits of free writing will have those words in common, which would be really nice. I especially want to see them to see how um, you've used the words that I've also used. So let me be like water. Let me flow. Let me know where to go without anyone needing to tell me. Let me fall like the rain and rise back up again. Like the water cycle, let me take a course that's predetermined. I don't want to think so much, get so anxious. I want to relax, like when I sit in front of the ocean, the waves like a guided meditation. Like, I think it says, let me be, what connects not only nations but continents. Let me allow travel and safe passage take you to where you can be welcomed when you have been in danger. Hello stranger, let me know where you want to go. Take it slow, row upon row of people standing on the shore looking out onto the horizon. Let me be the one to guide them let me also be the life inside them. I make a human. Without me, they would not know life. I am in the sky. I am in the ground. I am in the air. And I am all around. I am going to keep going, keep flowing. And who knows, one day I will be like water.
So that's my free write. Um, and um, I hope you enjoyed doing that as much as I did. Um, it was challenging, right? And I don't always get the chance to like put myself under this pressure. So it's really good to write alongside you. So I hope you enjoyed that free write. We're now going to go a bit further. And for that, we're going to have 15 minutes. So you might want to get more comfortable. If you weren't comfortable in that 10 minutes, um, you could move somewhere to be more comfortable. I'm going to stay here, but um, I am tempted to sit on my little sofa over there. But I might do that later in our longer time that we're going to have to write when we actually write our poem. So this now isn't a poem yet. This is memories. We are going to be thinking about memories about water. So I want you to give as much detail in those memories that you have. So they could be memories of things like swimming. They could be memories of fishing, if you've been fishing, um, going on a boat, um, getting caught in the rain. Um, it could be about crying. It could be about washing your hands. It could be about taking a bath. It could be about when you had to take a bath with your younger sibling and they peed in the bath. <laughs> like It could be anything you wanted. Um, so think about whatever um, comes to mind. We're going to have um, four different memories. So I'm going to give you a little nod or I'm going to say something, not just nod, because you might not see me nod. Um, I'm going to say something every three minutes to let you know that you can move on to the next memory now. OK, so you're going to start with your first memory. And like I said, be as descriptive as possible. Um, so if your memory is kind of when you went to um, this is one of my memories with my niece when I went to um, a city farm with her. So um, a farm in the city and um, it's um, lots of animals there and you're able to feed them. And she wanted to feed the animals. But after each animal, you got these pellets to feed them and they ate them from your hands. And after each animal, she wanted to wash her hands. So she went and washed her hands um, and um, every time. And so we spent as much time washing hands as we did feeding the animals. And it was a back and forth between uh, feeding the animals and washing her hands. And she was two years old. And something happened um, during that trip as well, was that we went to feed something that I thought was just a big pig um, but apparently it was quite a kind of had really sharp teeth and um, it could have bitten through her finger if it had the opportunity so you were meant to drop the pellets into the pig's mouth um, and let it eat them that way not let it eat from your hand because it might accidentally bite your finger and this was with my niece and my niece was only two years old. So I could have been responsible for her losing her fingers um, because I let her just have this pig come up and eat from her hands. And it was only after one of the um, farm keepers came up to me and said, you can't let her feed it like that. You've got to drop the pellets from, from on high. I'm like, if these animals are so dangerous, why are children just allowed to feed them? Like There should be a bit more um, guidance going on here. Anyway, so that was related to water because I remember her washing her hands all the time after each animal. Um, but what really stood out to me was that she um, could have lost a finger or two um, if she was um, bitten by that, uh, what I thought was a a big pig. So that's one of my stories in quite a bit of detail there. So thinking about your stories related to water, water doesn't have to be the whole story, but water has to be part of the story. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to write that one down for my first, and then I'm going to let you know every time we've had three minutes, um, so you can write your next one down. Okay, so farm story for me first.
Okay, 30 seconds on this first memory, and then you're going to move on to another one. Okay, time to move on to your next memory now. Okay, so put that one aside and move on to your next one. Okay, 30 seconds on this memory, and then you're moving on to another one, okay? Different memory of water. So I've been writing about taking my same niece to the science museum, and there's a place where you can play with a water cannon and boats that you can put on like a little stream or kind of artificial kind of moat. Uh, that the boats go around and how she was playing with the other children but also they were taking the boats from her and she didn't get upset which I thought was um, very sweet to watch um, although as an uncle I got a bit angry that people were just snatching things from her okay your next memory okay You might hear some noises, it's my upstairs neighbours, it's okay. Um, I wonder if you've got a quiet place to write in, it's not always possible is it to have somewhere quiet but um, one thing you could do if you want to focus you could put on some music that doesn't have any words, that's something I do when I want to have um, some time to focus even though there's noise around me, putting on some music maybe related so I could put music like that sounds like water, could listen to like waves or a river, um, might be fun. Uh, so you could try that if you wanted, but um, if you like silence, which I prefer, um, you could also try and get a quieter space to work in. It's not always possible now, is it? 
30 seconds left on this memory. I'm writing about how much my niece loves to brush her teeth and she would brush it more than once a day. She'd brush her teeth, well, twice a day. You're meant to do it twice a day. But she'd do it like after every meal and just because she feels like it. But we kind of have to say just in the morning, just at bedtime. Um, but she would always want to brush her teeth. I don't know if she likes the taste of the toothpaste maybe. Who knows? Okay, what's your next memory on water? Um, mine seem to all be about my niece, so my poem is probably going to be about her, but yours might be about different things, completely separate things. Um, so don't feel you have to link your memories in any way. They're already linked because they're yours, so that's the most important thing. Okay, we are wrapping up. You should have one, two, three, four memories. Um, we do have a bit of time, so you can go over them and you can add any more detail if you want to. So if there's anything you didn't get to say about any one of the memories and you want to get it down before um, the full time is up, you can do that. I'm still going with my fourth memory, so I'm going to keep going with this one and um, see what else I can add to it.
है So I told you the memory of the farm and I told you the memory of the science museum and I told you about my niece uh, brushing her teeth many times a day unless <laughs> you stop her and then I've got another memory with my niece again um, and it's about when I took her to the park and um, she we were watching the ducks on the pond basically um, but also there were other birds there like swans which she recognized because she already knew what swans were i don't know who taught her probably her mum my sister and then there weren't just ducks though because she just thought oh there's ducks and there's a swan but actually there were also coots with the ducks and um, i taught her to recognize what a coot was by the fact they're all black and they've got the white shield on the front of their head and that's a coot and I taught her that and she remembered it and next time we went to the park she was like coot a coot and it was a coot that she was pointing to so that was really fun for me to have taught her something and for her to have remembered it so that's a really happy memory for me um, especially now when I'm not able to see my niece. Um, I live far from them and we're not allowed to see family at this moment when I'm recording the video. So um, yeah, she's coming to mind, I think, because I miss her and I've got lots of memories with her. So that's our time on our memories. And that was my timer. So we have um, written a free write about water. We have also written down some memories about water. And now is going to be the time for us to write a poem about water. So you have a few options of how you're going to do this. OK, so you might use your um, memories, all of them, and turn them into a poem, including all of those four memories. And a good way you could do that, if they're very separate memories, you could go one and then write a poem about memory number one, and then two, and then write a mini poem about memory number two, and then three, and then four. And they're all linked together because they're all memories to do with water. And so that can be one poem that contains four miniature poems about water. So that's one way you could do it. So you number them one, two, three, and four, and they all go together. Or you could pick one of your memories that you feel most interested in writing about and expand it. OK, so you could expand that memory um, and you can kind of write more detail and um, more thoughts and more description and build up the poem out of just one of the memories. Or you could do it your own way and uh, you'll find your way as well. So what's going to happen is you're going to have 25 minutes now to actually write your poem and I'm going to be here as well I'm not going anywhere unless I need to make another cup of tea or go to the loo um all this talk of water that might happen um but I'm going to stay here as much as possible and write alongside you so what will happen is you're going to use your memories and um, turn it into a poem about water remember I'm going to want to hear this poem um, or see this poem. So you want to take a picture of it when you're done and you want to tweet it and share it with us. Or you could even take a video of yourself reading it. And what I'm going to do now is read you a poem by a young person um, that I led a poetry workshop for. I was the writer in residence for First Story at Hampstead School in London. And Abigail Mackenzie was one of my students. And um, this is her poem that is about water. And um, I ran a very similar workshop to the one I'm doing with you now um, with the students after school. It was like an after school poetry writing club. And um, this is what Abigail wrote. And it's called Happiness Comes From Those Who Cry. She sat in the pews, idle, lonely, but surrounded surrounded by those she loved, mourning a man they loved. She was close to the man 
always, a man of humour he was, a man who most misunderstood. But she stood, she stood for him, she knew not how to cry, even at a tragic time, she knew that she loved, she knew what she loved was at stake, but couldn't bring herself to face the heartbreak. Mother, sister and father too, all do what's naturally due, crying. Not she, she spoke. I will never see you again. The music played a second later, a song familiar to both her and him. With this, heartstrings wavered thin. Her wish of gloom came by, a miserable wish to cry. Nonetheless, never a happier goodbye. It's a beautiful poem by Abigail and um, made me emotional reading it. Um, it's about the loss of her grandfather. And I lost my grandfather a few years ago and it brought back memories for me and our um, family at the funeral. So um, maybe that brought back memories for you of someone that you've lost. Um, so these poems can be serious, they can be sad, they can be happy, um, they can go wherever you want to go, whatever you want to write about today, um, that's okay. And, you know, I've been talking about sharing them, but you don't have to, so don't feel any pressure um, that you're going to have to show this poem to anyone. You're writing this for you, and that's the most important thing. So I'm going to start a timer now, um, 25 minutes, and we're going to write our poems. Okay, time has started. Ah, poem about water. I think I've got enough paper left in my notebook. I've only got a few. Okay. My tea is actually cold now. But I don't want to waste it. some plain paper. Sometimes I prefer plain paper because lined paper feels so restrictive. Maybe, I don't know, I might want to have fun with how I write it and the lines don't necessarily need to be there. That is something you can do. I'm probably not going to do it, but if you want to, you could write your poem in the shape of water somehow. So like raindrops, if you wanted to do raindrops, you could like write. So write things like this, like water is falling down. You could write it down the page. You could things where you could write your poem around like that to make a, a lake or a pond and you could do anything so the shape of the poem could be like water as well that could be really fun um, but that's totally up to you
cardigan. So I have gone with writing about my niece and I have started with the memory of the farm and um, what I did remember about the farm as well that it was her second birthday when this happened um, so birthdays have become uh, something I'm thinking about as well now um, but yeah it's kind of still going to be about water but there may be other things in here as well I've called it hand washing so that's kind of setting the scene. Um, title is important, but you don't have to think about your title straight away. You might, when you get to the end of what you've write, written, um, think about what you want to title it. Um, can't always know where a poem's going to go, and I still don't know where mine's going, but that's okay. Still got quite a bit of time left. Uh, yeah, just under 18 minutes.
hear the neighbours upstairs. Not getting my quiet time. I hope you are. So if you're flowing, just keep going with it. If you're stuck, maybe look back at your notes, maybe look at your different memories, even your free writes, you might find lines or ideas that can feed into this poem now. Um, so it's okay to pause when you're writing and think. This isn't um, writing non-stop now, this is actually crafting your poem. So don't feel like um, you have to write lots, just write with intention, you know, now you're trying to put something across um, as precisely and as clearly as possible. So now is the time you can cross out and the time you can go back and change words and um, you don't have to just keep writing if you feel it's actually coming to a natural end. You can go back and start reading through it and making edits, adding words, making more interesting word choices as well. Um, so that's something you can start thinking about. Um, we've got just over 10 minutes left to write, but 
writing and editing um, are as important as each other. So you could be using some of this time to start editing your poem. I'm not sure where I'm at, but I'm taking a moment because it's quite an emotional one. about six minutes left now.
So if you're like me, you think you've come to the end, you can start reading over what you've got. And again, like I said, making adjustments, crossing things out, adding things um, to see if you've said what you wanted to say, or maybe you've surprised yourself with what you're saying. But see that now when you read it back, it kind of all flows and makes sense to you. coming up to our final minute so I'm going to share my poem with you in a second. Okay. So hopefully you wrote something and hopefully you want to share it. Um, like I said, you can take a picture of what you've written and you can tweet it or put it on Instagram and tag first story. Um, okay, and that's the timer. Oh, I promised myself I would keep going and we have kept going. So I'm going to share this poem with you now and um, I hope... Uh, you enjoy it. Um, it's called Hand Washing. You are four years old now, but when you were two, we took you to the city farm for your birthday. You wanted me, your uncle, to take you around to feed the animals. They gave us pellets of food. I don't remember if we had to pay for them or if they were free. But I do remember that after every animal, pig, sheep, goat, you wanted to wash your hands. This was before the government advised us to sing happy birthday two times whilst washing our hands. This was when we were allowed to see each other, the whole family together in celebration of you. You couldn't have a party this year, we spoke on FaceTime and you looked so sad. You had cards and presents 
and a banner that said happy birthday. You had balloons, but you were deflated. You didn't say you missed me. You didn't say much. But I said I miss you and I love you. And I'll say it again and again until I can see you in person and hug you. And even then, I won't stop telling you that I love you. When I'm lucky enough to read you a bedtime story and actually tuck you in, maybe I'll read you this poem. I love you like something essential, like blood, which you are to me. But more than that, I love you like water, like a cool glass of water on a hot day in Cyprus when we visit our family. I love you like the sea. I cannot fathom it. Even when I look directly at you, I know there is more love beyond my view. And whenever I wash my hands, I think of you. <sighs> so that was my poem for my niece. And that was the workshop. I hope you enjoyed writing and um, I hope you share what you write, um, if not with us, with someone that you love, someone that you trust. And um, I think they would love to see it. Um, but you can also keep it to yourself. There's going to be lots more videos and writing exercises on the First Story website and um, National Writing Day website. So do keep an eye out for all the other workshops to come. Um, that's it from me. I've been Dean Atta and thank you for spending this time with me.